Okay, um, thank you for taking the time to join me today. Uh, on the agenda, we're gonna review field services, which is a new application with uh, Odoo's V13. Um, and yeah, we're gonna go through it, and at the end, we'll have some time for Q&A. So I'll talk quickly about the agenda introduction. My name is Nick Kaczynski. I'm a sales consultant uh, here at Odoo, and I've been working with business software in the ERP space for around five years now, so I um, very much enjoy it, and we'll be happy to help with questions not only pertaining to field services, but anything in general related to business software. Uh, so introduction, we'll jump right into a demo. I've created a, a quick video to help you understand how field services works through the lens of a mobile view, and then we'll wrap things up with a Q&A at the end. So introduction, field services, what is the purpose of this app? Well, some of the big things that we're focusing on are that A, it's been designed to work on a mobile device. So I am gonna start this conversation we're gonna have today off with a, a story that's very much similar to the story our CEO uh, gave at the keynote, which is um, why field services came to be something Odoo, you know, thought it would make sense to develop. Uh, so there is a, uh, the, the story goes, right, there's a birthday party and they're planning for it and during that birthday party uh, for our CEO's daughter, his boiler went out and he of course lost heat in the home. So he called around and found someone to come in and fix it. The person came in to fix it and was you know, going through trying to rig something up because you know, it wasn't really clear uh, what was broken, what needed to be done, what you needed to fix it um, because they lacked the information necessary to make those decisions. So long story short, right, the boiler breaks again, same process, and you know, all said and done, this person could have maybe issued a quote, ordered a new one, right? There could have been many different avenues that the uh, service company could have gone through to resolve this problem. Um, lo and behold, our CEO you know, watched this situation unfold and decided that, hey, you know, there needs to be software out there to help people on the ground who are doing intervention, doing maintenance, providing services um, to track time, resources, you know, uh, and just general information related to the project. So the field services app has been designed to work on a mobile device, tablet, iPhone, iPad, uh, you get the idea. So that's, you know, clearly we don't want them, you know, our people in the field lugging around hardware uh, that makes their job more difficult, less efficient, so on and so forth. Uh, which, have we, and the beautiful thing about field services in Odoo is that it is integrated with the rest of the core business applications that we have, which includes invoicing, timesheets, help desk, accounting, inventory, um, quoting, all the website, all that, uh, which again, enriches the ecosystem that is you know, the Odoo platform. So a little bit about field services. From a back office perspective, it's going to allow your teams to more effectively schedule the resources. Uh, we're gonna go into the software shortly and look at you know, the interface, drag and drop, see who's available, who's not, uh, what the nature of the project is, and also an, an important integration that I just learned about is the integration with uh, time uh, with leaves. So if employees are sick or if they have a planned vacation and you need visibility into whether or not you can assign them this job at that day and time, you will have that, which is, again, it speaks to the integrated nature of, of Odoo. Manage billing, this is huge. Uh, tons of companies have people out in the field and there is a huge lack when it comes to communication uh, between what's going on in the field, what items or resources are being used, whether that's time or material, and what's ultimately being billed for. And being able to streamline that process and have it all under the same hood uh, is it's a huge value add for any, any company doing business uh, in such a way. So as far as front office goes, people in the field, uh, right, they're gonna track their time with this app. They can you know, immediately click on a button, start and stop, which we'll go over shortly, which uh, allows you to you know, have real time time tracking, which again can be used from, for billing, it can be used for understanding you know, resource capacity and you know, who's doing what, how much are we billing, you know, how much is that particular resource billing in the field, are they, are, are they aligned with uh, what you know, the general averages across all resources in the field? Right, having greater visibility into that regard. Worksheets, uh, very cool feature that we offer where you can say, you know, 
this is ultimately the job that was done. Do you agree or disagree? Can you please sign? You have a formal worksheet, which you know, not only allows the company to have visibility into what work was done on the job site, but it also can be administered to the client so that they can have visibility into what you did and they can you know, agree and again, be on the same page, which improves transparency. Uh, material usage in quotes, so I mentioned that, right? We can instantly track time and material and then the customer signature at the end, which wraps up everything together, gets everybody on the same page, formalizes the agreement and allows everybody to you know, go forward. So let's just jump into an actual demo. Okay, so you can initiate a field service order in two ways, which if you're familiar with Odoo, you're familiar with how projects and tasks are created. Um, one is by going in and actually manually creating a field service ticket by going up here, click create, voila. You can give it a title, a customer, you can choose a sell order to link it to, you have a date, that you schedule it through, effective hours will be calculated automatically. You can choose to assign it to an employee, uh, you link it to a project, and again, you uh, reference the worksheet that this, this uh, field service ticket will, will rely on. So that's the first option. The second option is through a sale order. So you can have an order in Odoo, which if you look at this for John Doe, it will, when you confirm the sale order, it will create a uh, a ticket. And you can also go through the help desk, as I mentioned before, look at your tickets here, and you can plan intervention, which is another way to initiate a field service ticket. So let's go back to the field service app itself, and let's go the first route and just create one manually. We'll create something, we'll call it for John Doe, or we can, you know, John Doe maintenance. Again, it'll relate, uh, integrate with the customer database. So we can see that here. It pulls John Doe's information. The effective date, right, hours, I can say I'm gonna plan this for the seventh, right? I can uh, end it on the seventh. I have my time here. I'm gonna plan it till 4.30. And again, assign it to these items here and I can leave a note, you know, needs repair. Save it. So I can issue a new quotation immediately underneath it, but more importantly, you can start, stop, you have a worksheet option here, and you have products. So as you can imagine, if I click on start, Odoo will start to calculate the time automatically. And you can see the, the uh, time in the, in the top right-hand corner of the ticket. Now, if I you know, need to go to the bathroom or you're getting lunch or whatever it may be, you can always pause, and you can always click on resume, which again will continue to track that time. What you can also do is you can add products. So if you are on site and you need to pull something out of your van or if you need to you know, consume something from inventory, then you can select the specific product that you are going to be using. And we'll just add a few here. I can increase quantities. And you'll notice, right, the UI is designed to work on a mobile device, right? It's very much with your finger, click on it. You don't wanna have to search a you know, specific product. You wanna be, make it very easy to add things that you're consuming so that you can continue to do what you gotta do. And you can go back. And what's beautiful is that Odoo's keeping track of all of this for us in the back end. It looks at all the products that we've added to this order. It's gonna sum the cost. It's gonna look at the time being tracked. And when I'm done with that time, I can click stop. It's gonna round it to the nearest, in this, in this case, 15 minutes. But you know, let's pretend maybe I consumed a full hour and end it. Now, you'll see it automatically created a new sale order down here for me and I can drill down into that sale order and I see everything that has occurred. Uh, and I'm in debug mode, I apologize for that. I'm gonna leave that, it's a little black, black box you keep seeing. Um, but you'll see, right, the service time right here. You will see the pedal bin and all of the different products that I've, that I've added. Now, if I go back here to field services, new install, oh, that's the wrong one. That's okay. So either way, you get the idea. And what you can do uh, when you are finished with that is you have the option to sign the report, right? So this is what you can present to uh, the customer at the end of the experience, which is just gonna detail uh, the date, the time, the employee, the description. It's gonna look at the time and material, um, right? The service on a ticket and, and the products consumed in their total. And just like the quotation app, you can leverage 
the sign function, which allows you to draw signature and sign. Now I'm gonna go back to the edit mode because there's another layer to this which is very important and it's called the worksheet. So if you open up the worksheet, this is an example of one that we have predefined in our system, which I'm gonna show you how to design your own worksheet in, in just a moment, but really the purpose of this is to help track finite details that are related to the project while in the field. So I can assign a manufacturer here, I can link a specific model number, I can you know, link a serial number here, uh, I can define you know, installation type, comments, I can say you know, I certify that these services were rendered, I can link pictures, and I can ultimately have a signature here as well, which if I adopt and sign, and of course save, and I go back, you'll see it'll mark the worksheet as completed. And then the next step would of course be to send the report or sign the report with the client and then be able to send the report to them once it's, once it's complete. And I'll actually go ahead here. I can see, write the worksheet down here and I can sign and make agreement that this has been rendered. And I'll see that this worksheet has been marked as signed. And when I jump back, oops, click the wrong button. install, okay. And you'll see now that I've signed it, I have the option to actually go ahead and send the report to the client, which will then of course fully integrate with, write the email. And I'm gonna actually have something pulled up here and you can see I just sent myself, received zero minutes ago, that actual worksheet and I'll see the breakdown here with everything wrapped up. So with that, when I mark it as done, you'll see instantly Odoo prompts you to create an invoice, which kicks off the payment workflow for the field services app. And if it isn't becoming clear to you yet, like the beauty of the app is that you can issue a field service or intervention, you can manage and plan who's gonna take care of it, you can track the activity on site, materials and time consumed, you can have a formal agreement signed by the client indicating that the services have been rendered and then the best part is, of course, you can invoice for this and you can send the invoice to the client, which I'm going to do right now. And we'll just, a regular invoice, pulls it up, automatically looks at time and material consumed. I can, my accounting team posts it and sends it off to the end client. And you know, someone right in the field can do this instantaneously. It'll take 10 seconds and your client can have an inbox, uh, an email in their inbox which contains the invoice. And if I open it up as if I am the client, I can view the invoice and right on the spot, I can say, yep, yeah, I'm ready to pay. And I can go in here and I hope my fake credit card works today, but pay now, they'll punch their credit card information in. And in this example, I'm using Stripe as a payment processor, but we also integrate with authorize.net, Ingenico, uh, PayPal, a few other options. And you'll see once this is refreshed, instantaneously the accounts receivable is all taken care of for me. I can see the journal items that were posted here, my debits and credits all lined up. I can also see down here that a transaction via Stripe was initiated and I can see that it has been confirmed, meaning Stripe processed the payment and what ended up happening is Stripe actually, when, it, when the payment confirmation comes back through, Odoo creates a payment and it posts the journal entries for the payment automatically, which then reconciles those, that payment against the invoice and marks the invoice as paid. And depending on how you wanna reconcile at month close, you can, uh, you can either have this be the final step or you can then have uh, what's called a post-it reconciliation flow where you, um, once you reconcile that paid invoice with the bank statement, then everything posts and closes out. But the option is yours. So that is more or less the flow of how Odoo sees value being added when it comes to intervention and maintenance and field services. The next thing that I wanna talk about within the field services application is gonna be, um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about just the nature of the UI and how you can quickly filter and see who is responsible for doing what, get into some planning and um, some reporting. So here when, when you click on field services and you jump right into this, you'll see that there's a breakout of the Kanban, the infamous Odoo Kanban view, uh, where everything is you know, drag and drop. You'll have it, in this case, broken out by day, and I can see everything that I am assigned to. So if you're on a mobile device and you pull up your iPad and your truck in the morning, 
and you want to figure out where to go, you can choose this view, or we have other views here, right? We have a list view, and I can easily group by start date by day, and it will render the same results with just a different view. I can also see that there's a new view in Odoo called the map view, which if I select it, in this case, it will show me all my tasks that I have uh, available on this screen, and it will break down their specific locations. And this will integrate with Google Maps, so I can see where everything is that I have to do, where I have to go. Uh, and Odoo would, if, uh, well, you leverage Google Maps functionality to uh, do what's called route optimization, which essentially will plan your routes for you. And you can just click navigate to and it'll pull it up inside of, of Google Maps here. So again, it's making the, uh, the life and the, and the work that the field service employee has to do that much easier by giving them all the information that they need to focus on what they do best. Now, not only can I navigate to a record, but I can also edit a record and go into that record uh, here, which is probably what it would look like if you were beginning to do your work. So that, in a nutshell, you have kind of calendar view. You can see a breakout of all your services and, and the date that they're scheduled for via the calendar. Uh, and then you have your Gantt chart view, which is not working for a reason. I don't need a function to didn't set that up right, but the Gantt chart view is more or less for like capacity planning and I can show you in a follow-up demo if you're interested in seeing it. So the next thing to focus on is, of course, you know, you can X out your filter options up here and you can have as a manager visibility across not just one particular employee's uh, to-do list, but everyone's to-do list. And again, you can break that down into here and you can continue to group and, uh, and schedule accordingly. If you look at the planning option, uh, we can say plan by user. Odoo has redeveloped its, um, its planning view to allow for a smoother experience when it comes to not only like viewing who is doing what on what particular day, but also uh, drag and drop schedule flow. So I can see on Monday that at this particular time, and I can open it up, uh, this employee is uh, going to be doing boiler maintenance for this customer. Now, if I want to move it and reschedule it, I can and assign it to someone new, I can certainly do that and it will drop it. And you'll see um, anything that's grayed out means that that employee is not available to work on such and such a day, which can help you schedule more effectively. Anything with a little red arrow, as Fabrice mentioned in the, uh, in the talk, I think it was yesterday morning, this indicates that it's late. So, and then of course we can see the, the date highlighted in, in yellow here, and the filter options continue to allow us to say what's to schedule, what's still to do, what do I need to invoice, um, what has been archived or what's planned for today, uh, and then you can of course filter out any, by any data point being tracked on the field service object. And then of course group information as well. Um, by default in the planning view, Odoo will group by user. If you wanna group by project, you can also do that and it will sum up here the total number of tasks in a specific point in time uh, per project here. And then lastly, I can look at by worksheet. So I have a few different worksheets available um, here, which I'm gonna talk about that next. So if you go to configuration, and if I look at worksheet templates, you'll see I have three examples here. Um, filter replacement is one that I built up uh, a few days ago, but you'll see if I go click on design worksheet template, what it does is it opens up Odoo Studio. And for those of you who are not familiar with Odoo Studio, Odoo Studio is a tool that allows you to drag and drop and create fields um, based on all sorts of field types, which you see here, which essentially let you track information on this record. So you'll see I have manufacturer, model, serial number, I've added a picture, um, right? they have the little checkbox option here, maybe I want to add a selection field down here. I can drag and drop it, and I can say happy or sad. And I don't know, maybe your field services people wanna uh, you know, use those metrics to, to measure how the customer seemed at the end of the experience. Uh, who knows, but yeah, we'll just say status. And we can rename that field directly there. And you know, there's a signature field type, which you see we can add, um, there's tags, there's priority images, many-to-ones, many-to-many, one-to-many files can be uploaded. Um, you know, 
you can get into calculated fields if you're, you know, need to you know measure things and whatnot. All pre uh, predefined here. So once you actually build that out, you can close it, and you'll see that that worksheet has been completed. Not completed, but it's done being edited, so it's in a, a final state. And if I go back to my tasks, you'll see when I create something new, we'll just call this test, link it to John Doe, and you can always choose the worksheet template here, and also on the project, so you may have, in this case, I have one project called Field Services, and when I create it, it creates a task within that project, but you may have different types of field services, right? You could have uh, intervention, you could have maintenance, you could have you know, upgrade field services, whatever it may be, and you'll have a unique project per, uh, per type of field service that you're offering. And at the project level, you can define which worksheet all the field service tasks created within that project reference at time of creation, which will, again, help automate um, the, the worksheets that are being administered uh, at the field service ticket level. Now, so we'll just look at the filter replacement that I use as an example and open the worksheet and you'll see what it looks like here. You know, we have, again, fill it out and we can add an image, comments, and now we have our, our status here and I can define happy or sad. And because all of these data points are being tracked, it allows for us to report at the worksheet level. So I can say, you know, filter all of the clients in the city of Buffalo who have had a happy experience with their, uh, you know, with their field service person and, you know, maybe a reference call and things like that. So you get the idea. Now, the next thing, how many people here are familiar, raise your hand, with like the way that sales and projects and timesheets and all of that integrates in Odoo? Or is it all, relatively new to you. Okay, so you're familiar, Mike? <laughs> so um, I'll show you what that looks like here. This is the second way to initiate the creation of not just a project or task, but a field service ticket as well. And I can click on create on a sale order, link John Doe, and you'll see if I sell something called, I have a repair service, you'll see if I open this up and if I view the sales data, I've created a product in Odoo called Repair, and you can have an infinite number of products in Odoo which are configured in such a way where when you sell this product, it will automatically create a, based on what you define here, create a task in an existing project, don't create a task, create a task in a, in a specific project that is titled that sell order, so every time you sell something, a new project gets created, or you can create a new project but no tasks. In this case, I would create a task in an existing project, and Odoo then lets me reference the specific project I wanna create that task within. And then I can also specify the worksheet associated with this task uh, based on the project that's sold. So we'll, you know, we'll use our filter replacement here, and we can save it. So you'll see when I sell this to John Doe and confirm, it creates the task up here. And you'll see I can, of course, click on this and drill down into the task like that. And you'll see it's just a, a field service ticket. Or I can go into my field services app and you'll see the task somewhere um, because it's not my task. Cell order 34 is the one we just did. Uh, just now you can see it tracked in the chatter. So that is the, and you'll see it automatically links the sale order which originated from that. So if you have a workflow where you are uh, creating an order and then issuing a request for service or on-site intervention, then this workflow would be great. If you're just creating the, um, the field service tickets, you know, when you get a phone, when you pick up a call, it works as well. And the last way to create a field service ticket is through the help desk, as I mentioned before. We can open up a ticket and I can plan an intervention and I can say what's the title of this, which project do I wanna create this task in, and then lastly I can link a customer. And I can create and view the field service ticket here. So really, right, customers are coming to us from all angles, whether it's new customers who want to do business, existing customers, or customers again who are existing who are coming for help and we need to you know, offer some alternative service uh, where we can initiate these, these uh, these tickets. Not to mention, Odoo also has what's called, you know, a feature in Odoo Studios called an automated action. 
and I'll just tell you about it a little bit. Uh, what it allows you to do is you can trigger the creation of any record across the entire Odoo platform based on some condition being met. So let's just say um, you know, a customer calls and on the help desk ticket, you, uh, you click maintenance, right? Just a little checkbox that says requires maintenance. You can have that be the condition that triggers the creation of the uh, field service ticket. So little things like that allow, it does require more configuration and setup, but um, you, should, you should know that, you know, depending on how much automation you want in your business, you know, these tickets can be assigned, you know, they can be assigned automatically based on the customer location with automated actions and all sorts of stuff. So I'm just keeping it very high level icing on the cake right now. But yeah, at the end, if you have more questions, we can certainly talk about that. So um, the, else to talk about, they did reserve us an hour for this and it's, we're about halfway through. So the, um, I can always have visibility through projects here, uh, products, which I've already gone over with you, and then the worksheet templates. But one thing I do wanna bring up is when I'm tracking time, you'll notice everything is gonna be integrated with the timesheet app. So as you're accumulating time on a specific task, it's yes, it's visible in the actual uh, field service ticket, but you'll see that it's also being tracked here in the timesheet application. So you can you know, look in the list view and I can group by, for example, employee and by project and I can drill down and I can see all the field service tickets here and all the time that this employee spent on each ticket. And you'll be able to, you know, that's how you can see how much time an employee spent, you know, for example, this uh, today uh, or each day on specific tickets. So this, the timesheet application is gonna allow for, for that view. The, and it also integrates with projects, but I'm not gonna go down that route today. Now what I do wanna show you quickly is the mobile view since I, uh, couldn't figure out how to uh, have the uh, mobile view set up in this. I, I actually recorded my, my phone. Uh, so you're gonna get a real live demo uh, with my wife texting me as well, right, middle so of the we demo. Are going to <laughs> um, but recording. it's authentic, that's what I'm going for here. And yes, my wife just texted me, but we're gonna keep going onwards. So we're gonna open up the field services app by clicking on it here. This is the mobile view. You can see, obviously you can change your views like this, look at a list view, look at a calendar view, and it's gonna work on a mobile device uh, pretty seamlessly. Now, as far as the list view goes, we can you know, easily search for a customer. Maybe I wanna look up John Doe, and I can open up that field service there. Or I can just go back and actually look at this view, and I can see you know, the John Doe order here. And this is what it'll look like on a mobile device, or on an, you know, on an iPhone specifically, but if you had a, uh, a tablet, this is what your customers could go to the door with to you know, work with a customer. We can start working on this when we pull up, as Fabian had showed us. It's gonna start tracking time automatically. Um, as we're on site, you know, maybe we'll, like Fabian said, we'll add a few products here. We'll uh, just put these random desks, which will automatically add to the order and we'll sum the cost. And as we're uh, finishing this up, you know, maybe I wanna stop the work, um, I can, you know, this will just go round to the 15 second. You can control what it rounds to. I'll just say, you know, I worked for one hour and I'll have the customer fill out the worksheet, which this is what the worksheet will look like from the mobile device, right? I can specify a manufacturer, a model. I'll just say model one, serial number, just do some random stuff. First installation, comments went over super well. Um, you know, the date, we can just say it's the fourth today and um, you know, check this and we'll do our signature all done on my cell phone, which is actually quite seamless and cool. Um, we'll just run back there and you'll see the worksheet is um, completed. And what we can do now is um, we can actually send the report to the customer to sign. And I can just go ahead here and actually, you know, just again, I can sign it again. I don't know why you would want to sign, sign it twice, but um, you get the idea, and this is a, clearly a demo version here, so we will, I'll actually just exit this and go back to, I got a little my, lost um, here. <laughs> back to my home.
home screen like that. And if I look up, um, I'll just look up John Doe this way. John is the customer. Open this up and you'll see now action. What I can do is mark this as done once that has been signed and I'll be able to um, send the report to the client or I can you know, go ahead and create an invoice just like that and create and view all on my mobile device with my service time recorded. Um, I can see the one hour at $40 an hour and then the two products to give me my total cost. And of course I can, um, you know, if I am the accountant or if I have the access rights, I can post it and actually shoot that invoice off to John Doe, you know, in the, in the click of a button and all done via Odoo Mobile. So I hope uh, this gives you some perspective and yeah, if you have any additional questions, feel free that I just received the, the actual, um, the invoice in my, in my, uh, in my mailbox here, you can see it there and, um, yep, there it is. So hope that's all right. You guys get the idea. Um, but so that's what it, you can see that it clearly works quite well on, on a mobile device, which is, like I said, in the beginning of the demo, the sole purpose of, uh, of Odoo building this app is to allow people in the field to quickly and efficiently do what they need to do, invoice the client and bring money home. Um, okay, so that more or less does conclude like a lot of the core functionality in the field services application. Um, I'd like to, you know, take the time now to just open the floor to questions to see, you know, yeah, just ask me whatever you want. Go ahead. Thank you for all the Sure. Thank you, thank you. Uh, two things. If you wanna make a live demo of the mobile, you can use QuickTime. Okay, QuickTime. Uh, okay. And awesome. Then, and, and, and I can show you. Thank and you. And then the second thing is, I'm seeing in the sales order, you, you select the product and the, this product is connected with a specific worksheet, but it's also it need to be connected with a project, specifically a project. But what happened, for example, when you have different project and you want uh, that specific task need to be connected with the project of the customer. Like uh, for example, consultancy, like uh, we sell um, uh, implementation software. Sure. So we want um, to connect this analysis phase when I have to install in, I don't know, eight hours. So I want to the task for the field management for the consultant be connected with the project for the customer specifically. So the customer has their own specific project yes. and you sell a service and you wanna map the task that's created from yeah. the sale order to that customer's yeah. project. And the task is the same, it's analysis. Sure. So uh, I, I don't want to create a, an item or a service for a specific project actually. Right, right. so this, the product would be called analysis. Yes. And what you, it's, I've done a video on this before where um, it is a small customization to do it but you can set Odoo up so that on the sale order line, are you familiar with what that means? Yeah, yes. So on the sale order line, you create a many to one and reference the project.project .project object. And then you can select from your list of projects exactly which project you wanna reference and create that task in. Now, you also have to have an automated action which takes the project from your sale order line and assigns it to another field, or you can overwrite the value of the project ID field on the task to inherit the value of the project ID on the sale order line, which will then overwrite the default okay. you know, behavior and assign it to whatever project you assign on the sale order so line. So right now, as, as the system as it is, you need a project call. You would services. need to customize that sale order line, yeah. Okay, so, so it's hard, hard coded now, the, the field services. You need the project call field service in order to connect it? You, in that case, if you are, because it, no, because you, you, you can drop do, down, when you, when you drop down by project, yep. you should. So you'll see there's something here called, um, where is it, timesheet field and mask, worksheets, I, I believe if you, hold on one second. So if you have the, I believe it's I believe it's if you have worksheets selected, then it will consider this a field service project. 
Whereas if you leave worksheets unselected, it would, let me just try to do something else. Is that, am I addressing your question? Does that make sense? Well, yeah, but if you have the, the same task, let's say not different project per, per customer, like uh, per city. So you have technicians in different city. Right. They're doing the same task. How you, because the task and the service is, is, is the same, taking the example that you, you should just show us. Right. You, but you have different cities. So you don't want to create uh, um, repairing for, I don't know, Miami, repairing for San Francisco in order to, to see on the Gantt view how you are performing per city or per project. Because if you go to the field service and the Kanban view, and okay. you will see you have only one project showing all repairing services. So if I go to, if I'm in the field services app. Yes, yeah, so go to the Kanban. I'm in, Cam this is Kanban? Oh, sorry, um, uh, Gantt, sorry, Gantt view. Uh, Gantt view. And if I group by project, for example, there's yes. a field service project. Yeah, and then you're gonna see all tasks connected with this specific project. Correct. But the task is the same, like a filter replacement. You have this specific task, but you're doing this in different locations or doing different projects. But now you, you have to group in only one project without customization. I know, I know it is right. how it's done now. But you, I mean, so you, I mean, if you create another project, you can reassign that filter replacement because that's just a task, right? You can reassign that to another project. But they have to do it manually after the sales order was created mm -hmm. without customization because, without you don't cus have, because you don't have in the matrix or in the line the, the project. The, well, it's the reason why it was created in this field services project and not, for example, um, test project was because when I look at the product, not the profit and loss, but if you go to the product and I pull up repair, mm -hmm. you define which yeah. You define yeah. it here. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I can say this repair service, you know, maybe, you know, this repair service is always going to create a project, uh, create a task in this project. Whereas you may have a different type of repair service, which creates a task in a different project. So you would have to just, you'd have to differentiate with, by product if you want to, when it gets to that automation. Okay. Does that answer your question? Well, yeah, it's confirmed what I'm, I was trying it's to do it. It's hard-coded in, yeah. And, and, and now I'm confirming that you need customization to do it. It's not to assign it, robot. yeah, to assign, like, to pick your project at the sale order level, like when you're selling it, like, oh, I want to create it in this project. You need customization. Okay. And I've, right, is that, that's what you're asking. Yeah. I've battled internally very hard to allow for users to assign the project that they want that task created in at the sale order line, but it's, um, yeah, I was wondering I because probably wondered. you do this because you have to use it with your consultant as well in Odoo. Yeah. So in that case, you're going to make the customization in order to use it internally. Well, internally at Odoo, when we sell a product, it creates a task in the same project every time. So, what, so for example, I sell implementation services. Mm -hmm. Every time I sell that implementation service, it will create a task in Odoo Quick Start. That's the name of the project, US. So it's, I don't, it's, okay. and if I sell, right, if a development service is sold, which is different, but a if, different if, product. If you contact different customers? And, yeah, it, and, and then, I mean, know. it depends on how you structure your service organization, but yeah. in Odoo, it's, there's one project per department, more or less. Okay. Um, whereas you are tracking, your model is different, you have one project per customer. So it's, it's, it's different. But the customization, I, I can show it to you Very after, good. if yeah. you wanna see it. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Go on. So what, what changes when you choose to create tasks in sale order projects? Can you uh, repeat it just in case? What, okay, so what changes when you create a task in a sale order project? Yeah. Oh, on here. So yeah. what it does is it creates, it, it creates a new project for that sale order and a new task in that project. And I can show you what that looks like here. Um, repair. So 
So it created, if I go look at my projects now, I have sell order 35 and a repair service in a brand new project. And I could have, if I wanted to, um, um, you cannot assign a, a sale order to uh, an already existing project. And you, yeah, you wouldn't assign the sale order to a project. You would, because the, the integration is actually between the sale order line and the tasker project, if that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So the, yeah, there's, I mean, on a sale order, if you look at the way the order's designed, the sale order is this whole record, right? Um, it's this record. This, this is actually the sale order line. So each one of these lines are its own object in Odoo. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah, no, I, I knew you can't. I've worked almost all in pen. I didn't know if that was a feature added in between. I know, yeah. yeah. It's, um, but yeah, that's, so you can, to go to like what you were asking, it would be, you can edit the list view and you can drag a project, like the project record here. And then this is kind of like a bootleg workaround that I have come up with, but there's our developers or consultants would probably have a better uh, solution for you. But, and then, and I'm just gonna do it quickly, but. So like on the project, you can, I'm just gonna create another project field. And it would be a many to one. Um, project, project by project. So now I have another project field on the project, and then I would just create an automated action in Odoo, where I say on the um, update project, on the project, I on uh, creation and update, I actually want to update the record, and it's going to. This is actually going to occur on the. Um, on the project, that's right. Update the record, and I want to say the field um, project, and let's make sure it's the right field. It's not, it's the customized one. So I want to say, um, let me just search more. There should be two, it's, uh, or is it the, no, this is, so what I want to do is I, this is the custom field. So the, is it the, no, I know why. I did it wrong. I needed to uh, create it on the on the task because I want another project field on the task ID. Um, I need to one. Um, project dot project save, and now I create an automated action. Sorry, it was a long night last night, so I'm uh, <laughs> a little slow today. Update project, um, project, task, on creation and update, update the record. Now there's two project fields here. One should not be project ID, it is, but it, if I uh, just do search more. Now, it's C project ID, and what I want to do is I would just do a Python expression, and I would inherit the value of the um, X project ID field, which is going to be what is going to come from the uh, related field on the cell order. So you also have to go to the model project at task, and um, you want to make it a related field. So the 123. Um, so this project ID is actually going to be a related field. I think it's like the sale line ID dot, and then whatever the name of the project field is on the sale order line, which I have to look at that too. And then, so what, what would happen is it would, um, right. Exactly. So, yeah, order, so the sale order line which the name of that field is 56. So it's this crazy name. And then um, on the um, on the project.
And then, yeah, it's the, um, so it's the sale line ID. That's how you reference it back. So here it would be, um, that field would be, would be related. So it would be, um, so sale line ID dot that, save it. And now when you create a sale order um, for that repair service, I can say this repair service, while it's designed to create, and I'll say um, in an existing project, we'll say, while it should create it in office design, I'm actually going to have it create it in um, DPC 2001. And I didn't do it right. Um, but yeah, so what it should do in this point is really update the field on the task, update the field, the project ID field on the task as well again to then put it in the right project. But I can show you it and make it work after this. And does anyone, yeah, go on. So for the uh, field service uh, completion by the, like what we would call a service techs, in the scenario where you have like high volume, so we have say 500 field services a day uh, yeah. over the course of the month, our field service people are not necessarily invoicing, but they're completing those field services. And then you might have a customer that has maybe 10 of them belong to that customer and they're billed at the end of the month, does that roll up into something so where, where like a billing group can then? Yep, so when you complete a field service, you'll notice in the workflow I did, you mark it as done. And once it's marked as done, then it goes into a pile of, because the field service is linked to a sell order and the sell order has a status and the status is either to invoice or not yet ready to invoice. And if you look here to invoice, Voice, the order assigned to that field service, which inherits the time and materials from that field service, will either be ready to invoice or not. So at the end of the month, when you go to invoice, you'll look at all your orders to invoice. You can always group by the customer, open it up, select all, action, and create invoices. And Odoo would then, in this case, I believe out of the box, it would consolidate all create invoice. Create a single lines. invoice? To create a single invoice. Excellent. If you want to break it, so if I create and view invoice, there's 15, 13. So in this case, it's, yeah, see it consolidated. Um, you can see all the lines listed here. And here are all the related sell orders it took into consideration. Great. If you want to decouple them, you can do that as well. Excellent. Anybody else have any questions? It doesn't have to be just field services related. I mean, you can branch off. I don't care. Really? I, I can, Go on. Let's change the, the module. Let's go to rental. Why? All right. Uh, why? Everybody have a good time. <laughs> go on. But, no. uh, <laughs> why, why the logic is if you create from normal sales order, yep. the rental is not created. Um, you need a specific sales order type, like a rental sales order. So if you want to invoice or quotation for rental plus another equipment, it doesn't create the rental services. So that's a good question. There's, I don't know what the technical side of that is. I'm assuming there is one, but the only difference between order and a rent is if you look here. Yeah, I know, I know there's a few. You know, there's a little button that, uh, Boolean that you can check is a rental. To, to come, is it possible to transform a sales order into rental sales order to allow to? To allow to? Quote rental items plus service item plus. I think, let me, let's test it. I honestly, I have not spent much time playing no, with rental yet, but you can just, there's this, um, there's a field here. It says like able to be rented. Um, give me a second. Uh, I need to. Rent. Is it rent? What is it? Um, unless they changed it. Uh, can. Uh, 
uh, what is the name of it? Does anybody, do you know the name of that field? I'm. Okay. Um, two or three more minutes until it's over. Okay. Got it. The, yeah, I, to be honest with you, I have to look deeper into that. But I, I think it's just a different model. model. But on the they, they cell. Create, I think they, they create a new one. To create a new. They, they create. And in in Node 13, you have, I think it's another model about uh, rental services. Right. I know why, because there's, there's a new, yeah, exactly. it's, but it's if you look at rental orders, I believe the object that it references is still a sell order. Is that like your question? Yeah, let's say that you have a catering uh, business. So right. you rent chairs and tables and then you sell food and then you sell, I don't know, another things. So you want to make a, a one quotation about the services. Right. So right now you cannot do it. So you have to create a sales order or quotation for rental, and then you have to go to Are the you, so if I have like this desk, you're saying if I then try to add a product like that I want to rent, mm -hmm. it's not, it, it should still allow me to create rental, um, it's a service. No, because it, what is not happening is when you try to quote a rental service, it's, it's popping up uh, a specific wizard, then you have to like this one. This, re yeah. yeah. Got it. So the reason this wizard is going to pop up, I believe, is because there is a field on the rental order that is checked, which is called um, rental... It is, it's called is a rental order and you have to add it. Mm -hmm. I believe that activates the view when you add the product. So you can technically modify the sale order to say this is a rental yeah. order. That's the field that and I, allow it. and then it, it'll allow it. Cause it's just a view that you have to activate. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. There's, does anyone else have any other questions? No? Okay, I was gonna show you quickly, but you can edit. But anyways, uh, yeah, we'll see. Field name. Oops. Well, I'm speedy today. So it's, with this you'll see it's not checked. So, uh, where did I add it? Um, is a rental order. Isn't sure. It's okay. We're gonna have to do it later. But okay, you got the idea. Does anyone else have any more questions? Okay. Cool. Thank you. Thank you.